Hello folks, I'm Greg Delane. I am the host of this show, Real Estate Q&A with Greg Delane. Today we're doing a little different show. As you can see, I'm wearing a different t-shirt. Uh, you know, I believe that the community center of a community, community centers and churches are the foundation of a community. It certainly has a lot to do with the neighborhood and who wants to move into that neighborhood and who wants to enjoy the benefits of that neighborhood. So, and I've had people on this show a lot, uh, pastors, and we talk a lot about our community. And, and because of that, I'm, I'm pleased to say, and I'm excited about my, my guest on the show today. Uh, today on our show, we have a young man who is now the new commissioner of the community center here in Greenberg. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Andre Early. Andre, how you doing? Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You know, we have a short show here, but uh, the community center is, is special in my heart. And I see so many kids and the things that go on there. So before we get started, I have a few questions for you. But okay. before we get started, I'd like you to do a quick three or four minutes of your background and how you came to be the commissioner of the community center. Okay, okay. Well, I look at it like this. I am a product of that community center. Um, I was raised in the Greenberg, uh, in the town of Greenberg, uh, actually in the Fairview section uh, over near the Parkway. I was actually raised in the Parkway home section. So I graduated from uh, Valhalla High School back in the late 80s. Uh, and then I uh, started my my, my educational path at uh, Hampton University, located in Hampton, Virginia. And then from there, um, I, you know, I did one of those, you know, find myself type of uh, 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 adventures and uh, finally uh, realized I wanted to work with youth. So I ended up at the White Plains Youth Bureau. Mm -hmm. That was uh, back in the late 90s. And from there, I went on to uh, oversee undergraduate affairs for my fraternity, Cap Alpha Psi, located in Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, stayed there for about 13 years. And the next thing you know it, I landed right <laughs> back at the Theodore D. Young Community Center. Well, as as we refer to it now, since uh, the early 90s, the Theodore D. Young Community Center. Um, it, it's still the Fairview Greenberg Community Center, um, but uh, and here we are in our 50th year. So, uh, 50th year. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing milestone. Uh, when you think about the, uh, the history mm -hmm. of uh, the civil rights era uh, and you think about how the community center was started back in 1967, you know, we weren't um, um, originally uh, in its current location. We were actually housed at, a, at an abandoned uh, restaurant uh, on Terrytown Road. I think I, I should have got a picture of that. Uh, I should have yeah, got a picture uh, of that. Uh, the address was 306 Terrytown Road, and I believe the restaurant was like Delmonico's Pizzeria or something like that. Mm -hmm. But that's where the community center uh, actually opened up. It was at that time called the Greenberg Youth Center. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Wow. Yeah. Now, here's the next question. Yes, sir. The commissioners from start to where you are now, who were they? Who, who was... Cause you know, we all stand on the shoulders of people that came before us. Definitely. Okay. Let's start. Who Definitely. Was, who was the first? So, so as we open up the community center, they were not called commissioners. They were actually executive directors. Okay. So, so um, the first one that served in, in that capacity was a, a gentleman by the name of Eddie Gwen. Okay. And then in 1969, um, a young man by the name of Theodore D. Young took uh, over the reins of um, the Greenberg Youth Center, and he was pretty much the uh, the catalyst that pretty much uh, opened up the Fairview Greenberg Community Center okay. um, at its current location. And then from there, and he served in that capacity for about 23 years. Theodore Young. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. And then from there, it was uh, uh, Barbara Perry uh, served for approximately seven years, and right after that was Hope and White. Who served uh, for approximately seven years, and then uh, ah, I'm starting to notice a pattern there. <laughs> and then um, uh, they had a little transition between between Hopeton and um, uh, the next one that served that was uh, Bill Carter. But in between that transition, there was um, um, 
Got Valerie it. Whitehead. Valerie Whitehead, uh, she served for about seven to eight months yeah. uh, to keep, you know, the doors open and keep yes. the ship afloat. And then from there was uh, William L. Carter. Big uh, Bill. And he served there for approximately eight years, and he was the one that was responsible for bringing me on board. And, and it, it, it's all, it actually all circles back because I originally met uh, Bill when I was working at the White Plains Youth Bureau back in the late 90s. Wow. Yeah. You know, Bill was uh, somebody... He was a good friend of mine, special to me, and he did a lot. He had a, uh, his personality. I was say his personality. <laughs> uh, he was on the show. I had him on the show a while back, and perhaps while we're taping the show, we'll be able to put put a little little piece of Bill on there. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the community center is the foundation. I know we have some pictures up there. I'd like them to put up. Let's start with the swimming pool. They have a nice pool in there, and look at that. Well, that's I'm, I'm gonna say that uh, pool opened up. Uh, they broke ground in 80, 1981, and uh, so it opened up in 1982. It's an Olympic size indoor pool, wow. um, and it's it's just amazing. Uh, and believe it or not, we actually open up the doors at 5:30 in the morning for those who want to do their uh, their daily lap swim uh, prior to them going to work. You know, get their daily exercise in. That's gorgeous. And uh, it, it's it, it's amazing because um, it, it's it's just the crown jewel of 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 Greenberg. Wow, that. And so you have uh, lifeguards are ready to. Now I know a lot of seniors. I've sold properties where I said, "Where are you going to be? Because we got to get to the house. You're going to have an open house. We're having the whole engineer inspection, inspection, and they'll say, "Listen, I'm down at the pool today." <laughs> so a lot of seniors come down there and exercise in the pool. They have different things like that. Well, well, let me say this: um, the community center is is special because it really um, addresses the quality of life yes. of residents within the town of Greenberg. And that's what makes Greenberg really so special. Yes. Um, I really refer to the town of Greenberg uh, affectionately as a modern day Mayberry. Okay. So if you think about it like that, you know, everybody knows everybody. Um, we know our police officers, we know our fire department. Yes. Uh, we know our, our, our leadership, you know, yes. our town council, our town supervisor who has an open door policy. Yes. Um, and, and it's just an amazing family oriented town. And the community center is at the center of it, of it all. You're right. So, so when you come into the town of Greenberg, if you choose to reside in, in, in the town of Greenberg, you look at, um, what it has to offer. Absolutely. You know, about two years ago, maybe it was three years ago, the power went out. And I remember doing a lot of real estate work up in the community, in the center, in their community, in their, in their computer room. Because mm -hmm. I, I didn't have no power for whatever reason we couldn't get on. And, and that's just a small part of what the community center, do, mm -hmm. the community center does. But I remember how important that was for me because I could yeah. not get online and I was losing my mind and I went up there and I was it was a great 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 time now yeah. let's get a picture of the basketball court now I remember when that was redone when they had the uh yes sir so uh <laughs> the 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 floor finally gave out during um and it wasn't even Sandy it was actually Irene <laughs> it was it was actually Superstorm. It was Superstorm Sandy and, and Hurricane, Hurricane Irene. Irene. And um, there was uh, extensive flooding that took place uh, within the gym, and it knocked the gym floor out, and it was out of commission for approximately three years. Wow. Right. Wow. So so the gym finally got, uh, the gym floor was finally replaced, and um, it opened back up uh, in the summer of 2013, right before I started working there. That that is that is gorgeous, and I know that they have you guys have tournaments and different. Right. Well, now now the gymnasium is is special because of course yes we do have recreational activities that take place there, but it's also used as a multi-purpose room um, for those that need to u utilize the facility for for events, yes, parties, yes, um, you know for those that pass away, yes, we open it up for repass, you know, events uh, yes. after after the funeral services. Um, Concerts, yes. Uh, yes. Comedy shows, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's it's a, it's a full. It, it's. Let me just say this: while we are all uh, civil servants, yes. um, working within the town of Greenberg, uh, my staff it, they are specialists when it comes to event planning, 
And because of all of the programs and activities and the services that we offer, um, you need that little, that little niche in that industry because we assist so many individuals with yes. the events that they want to no, you know, host I, I, right there at the community center. I totally understand. Now, if somebody's watching the show right now and they say, wait a minute, we, can't we, we should do this. Uh, what is the time? You need to probably plan at least two, three months in advance because... At, at bare minimum, bare uh -huh. minimum. Um, our calendar stays full. Yes. Um, and we do open up uh, our reservation period at the beginning of each year in January. So uh, individuals, residents, as well as non-residents that need um, a facility such as ours, uh, they contact our staff and um, we make the arrangements. But I definitely believe in uh, proper planning. <laughs> Has the job gotten any harder since you were the... Uh Deputy Commissioner, and now you're the Commissioner. Is the things picked up a little bit? Really? You gonna ask that? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know when you're the 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 person that says yay or nay, uh, it 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 things you'd be surprised at the questions and the sometimes small. I don't want to say small or small-minded or petty, but sometimes the issues that you never heard of come out when you become the person that can say no, and this is why we've been saying no for 20 years. Just because I'm here, don't think that you can get a yes, you know, and it, well, you know, it's, it's, it's human nature for yeah. those individuals to push the envelope, to try to, to see what they can get. Yes. And, and I get that. And that, and that's fine. Um, has it been a, a challenge over the past, uh, so let's see, I've been officially the commissioner for the past year and a half. Has it been a challenge? Yes, sure. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I laugh with my family now because for some odd reason I'm, I'm getting gray kind of quicker now. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I'm not getting old. I'm just getting gray. <laughs> yeah, those are <laughs> hairs of wisdom. <laughs> yes, but but um, when I see the end result of what we do and what we try to accomplish, uh, honestly, it's all worth it. Absolutely. I uh, I always tell people that I don't. I don't lose anymore. I either win or I learn. And I can't bring up the word lose because that has a whole nother world that you think and it can it can impact your mind. You don't see we don't lose. We either win or we learn. And and I'm not going to get a yes every time I try to do something cuz I'm one of those people that push that envelope. You are too. We push envelopes because there were people that came before us that had nowhere near the opportunities we have to push the envelope. They pushed it, but there was a time that they better not even get caught with an envelope. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. you, 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 we're only here on earth for a cup of coffee. We can't be here complaining and whining about stuff. You got to help people. And, and when I was in the community center this morning and listening to those kids laughing and running and playing, <laughs> listen. It's, that's that's what it's all about, Greg. You really can't beat it. Like um, you know, I had to rush back over here for this for this um, for this program um, from uh, Woodlands Middle School High School because we are having one of our end of uh, end of the summer um, summer camp program that's going on, and you know we had summer camp open for the past six weeks, and uh, you get a chance to see what the kids were exposed to and have learned yeah. over the past six weeks. And their theme was really centered on 50 years of wow. the community center. And it was amazing. So the community went the 50 years is this year? Yes, sir. 50 yes, sir. years. Yes, sir. 1967 to uh, 2017. 50 years. To you know. just, just a few years older than me. Mm. But when you look at what that center has meant to so many people. That's right. We're talking about generations. That's right. That's We're right. talking about generations. That's right. Of making a positive impact. You know, I was on the website this morning, and I want to make sure we get this website up. The website is www.tdycc.org. That is correct. Okay, let me say that again, and we'll probably get this posted at the bottom, but it's www.tdycc.org. T 
D Y C C dot org. Great website. You can find out so much about what the community center is about. Well, and, and since uh, since I've been on board, what we've done is, you know, we finally caught up to uh, technology. Uh, you don't actually have to come into the facility to register for programs. You can actually register for the majority of our programs online. Really? Uh, yes, sir. You could actually uh, find out, you know, everything that's going on within uh, the community center right online at our website. And then because of our 50th uh, anniversary, uh, we actually have some information that leads up to our 50th anniversary celebration, uh, which will be taking place in uh, October, which if we go back to the history of the community center Come on. and how it was born, <laughs> Come on. it was born out of civil unrest. It was born out of the civil rights era where, you know, the disenfranchised um, has something to say. Yes. So when you think about 50 years later and um, some of the same issues are happening today, mm. you look at our feature speaker for our 50th anniversary gala you know, former Ambassador Andrew Young, who was one of Martin Luther King's right-hand men, um, and how he's going to bring everything full circle. He's the feature speaker? He's the feature speaker. Andrew Young? Yes, sir. What date is this going to be on? That's going to be uh, Wednesday, October 11th. Do you guys hear this? Wednesday, October the 11th, 50 years. Uh, I am a huge, huge person that believes in things that and I've seen a lot you know I'm a little older than you okay. but uh you know I me I remember me and my brother watching TV the morning uh Oswald was shot on TV mm -hmm. this is after Martin Luther uh, this is after Kennedy was Kennedy. shot in 63 mm -hmm. they shot him on on TV bringing him from one cell to another uh, Martin Luther King being assassinated, uh, Malcolm X being assassinated. Uh, I've seen some things, and mm -hmm. I've grown up in Oakland, and I knew Huey Newton. Huey Newton. So uh, I've seen some things, and, and this is not a political show. But I'll just say that <laughs> who is in charge right now is it, and I saw him on TV last night, and he said, and I, my wife hates me doing this, but I like, he said, I know it, you know it, everybody knows it. And I said, this guy, he is a 70-year-old child. And, and I just wonder that if the, any past president, I don't want to stop at Barack, but any past president, if he would have said and done some of the things that this man is doing, they would have impeached and threw him out immediately. Uh, it bothers me that... And I don't really blame him because he did everything possible not to get elected. He did. <laughs> talked about touching women. He talked about, uh, it, listen. You just turned it into a political show, sir. Yes. <laughs> so it really lets me know that, uh, well, I don't want to get into it because right. I'll, I'll get going and I don't want to. Right. Now, let's put that picture up of the uh, the William Carter Summer Jazz Series. Ah. Uh. This is, I love this. The first, the opening act was the Take Six. For this year, yes, it was Take Six. And you guys, it, the, when this show shows, it will be too late because the final show is tonight. That is correct. And what, what time do the shows start? You have like about six. We go from either 6.30 or 7 to 9 p.m. But the show starts in July? Right. Uh, we usually run for six weeks, and we usually use the first uh Thursday in July. Yes, and we run from uh, from there to about the second uh, Thursday in August every and, year. And th this is free. All you got to do is come. All and you have to do is bring a chair. And, and no, you don't even have to bring a chair. You know, <laughs> we have chairs set up. You come sit under the pavilion. You take advantage of all the vending, uh, yes. all the vendors um, selling their wares and food and. Uh, Will Chef Lamin be there? Hey, come on, man. He's, <laughs> he's a staple. Yes, between, yes, be, yes. Between yes. Chef, between Tasty Tuesdays, oh. you know, between, I, I mean, I see. You better name See, I'm about to okay. say, see, you, see, you're going to get me in trouble with <laughs> these right. names. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I'm going to. I saw the show. I'm, you I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, 
but we have um, it's it's such a family oriented um, uh, evening. Um, you come out, you you enjoy the atmosphere, you enjoy the environment, you enjoy the music, but then if those that are in the park, you pay attention to what's going on. That's right. You have the kids playing in the in, right. in the playground. They're on the sprinkler pad. That's right. Uh, we have our summer basketball league going on at the same time. So young men and young ladies are playing basketball on the basketball courts. We have um, uh, residents that are taking advantage of the handball court. Yeah. Quota. Like so much is going on, um, and at, at uh, Yosemite Park, and. Uh, uh, sponsored by our, our department in the um, Theodore D. Young Community Center. It's, it's amazing. Yes. And, it's amazing. And, and, you know, it's so important to have these things because you could, today with technology and these kids on the playing games, you know, they don't get outside. And I, when I grew up and I saw Julius Irving do a move, I couldn't wait to get to the court mm -hmm. to try in my own mind to do that move. These kids today, it's great that they need to get outside, but also the parents. Uh, you need to know when the kid walks by, whose kids are those? How can they live across the street or right a block from you for 15 years and you don't know their parents, you don't know their other brothers, and the community center allows people to say, wait a minute, that's that's your child? Oh wait, your, that's your son that went to college? Let me and, 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 and let, can I bring that home for you come real on, quick? Come on, come on. So um, here it is. I'm at the tail end of, you know, a, uh, recognizing the fourth anniversary of my mother's passing. And then 18 months prior to that, my father passed. So they did not live long enough to see me where I am today. Yeah. But one of the proudest things that I have going on is those seniors that are in our programs I remember your mother. See. I worked with your mother. See. They would be so proud of you. Yes. I remember hanging out with your father. See. You know, so. Yes. It, you know, it, it brings everything back home um, when it comes to how we were raised. That's right. And how we were supposed to behave. <laughs> you know, <laughs> as a kid, I could, uh, when we, when, and I did a lot of little hulam stuff, and me and my guys, we did some bad. But when we walked by the church, I remember if we were trying to smoke cigarettes or cursing, we would stop in front of the church. And then the closer I got to home, there were things I couldn't just do in front of my parents. I couldn't do it. Mr. Jones better not see me do it. Mr. Brown and my mother would say, if you do something wrong, I want to hear from you. I don't want somebody else to call me and tell me. Mm. You tell me. Don't you let, you know. But that was... That was a time it that it, a different it, time. It, it, it takes a village. It ta it, yes, and uh, definitely. I uh, even to this day I don't have a problem letting a young man or young lady know. Listen, that's that that's a bad look. Don't don't behave like that, and and certainly don't think you can behave like that in front of me. I'm not I'm not I'm going to call you on it. So you might have a little slick thing and do your head snapping and your thing, but. You'll know next time when you see me, you'll say, we can't do that yeah, in front of him. Exactly. He doesn't allow that. Exactly. And, and it does, um, even to this day. It still takes a village. It takes a town. It takes a community to raise uh, our youth of today. That's right. Um, the youth of today are totally different from you, definitely totally different from me, um, because of what they have been exposed to at such an early age. But the most consistent thing is that you are still representing home, you're still representing your parents. That's right. So you can go ahead and act up if you want to. Best believe I'm still going to check you and then I'm going to call your mama. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I helped a lady the other day at a store uh, with her with her baggage and doing some things. She's an older lady and I was putting some, helping her with stuff in the car. She said, oh, thank you so much. Men don't do that. I said, my mother, I can feel my mother. God, and she's still here with me, and uh, but I can I know the way I was raised, and I'm not allowed to walk past things. The boy, go over there and help. You know, <laughs> what are you doing? You see that lady? Go over there. You know, and so uh, we stand on the shoulders of, of people that came before us, and I, I believe in karma. I think I think karma has everybody's address. Everybody. And I think when I helped that lady with her lug or bags or whatever I got to help her do, 
it might not come back to me here, but somewhere in my family, somebody's helping my daughter. Somebody's helping uh, my aunt who can't get around too good anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the way life is. And you gotta you gotta be you gotta be real. You have to be real. And and I, I will say this though, um, because when I look at you know at, at this point in my life, I'm looking at things you know in, in a grander you know scale. I look at the bigger picture. Um, you don't know what you got till it's gone. So you have to appreciate everything, even the little things. You still have to appreciate what you have now, what you have um, access to. You can't take anything for granted. Yeah. You can't take anything for granted. Yeah. And that, that's and that's what <laughs> the community center is really all about. You know, and, 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 and trust me, it's not easy. You know, we, we, we face budget cuts every year. And and um, it's taken a toll on us. It, it really has, you know, taken a toll on us because we can't provide um, the services to the extent that we used to. So you know, now we have to modify. Yeah. But you know, you don't know what you got till it's gone. That's right. Uh, if so, if anybody's watching this show and y'all just hit the Powerball, you better send some money to the community center. There's a lot of programs that you can help out, but go down and ask for a tour. Come see what we're doing down here. The community center is a special place. Listen, we got we got about forty four seconds. I want. Is there anything that you'd like to say before we close? Well, um, at the time of this viewing, we're going to be uh, pretty much at full steam ahead, working on the fiftieth anniversary uh, celebration. Um, I encourage those that would like to take advantage of uh, seeing uh, Andrew Young mm. um, on Wednesday, October eleventh. You know, every all of our information is available on our website at uh, tdycc.org. Um, and we're going to be celebrating the whole week. Uh, we're also going to bring back um, a community breakfast in, in uh, reminiscent of the days of when we used to host the Martin Luther King breakfast in January every Early. year, which went on for over 20 years. Early, thank you so much. Thank this you. has been a great show. Thank, thank you, sir. Yes. It's a pleasure. That's it.